Good morning, joyful gardener viewers and subscribers. Today I'm gonna to show you a pruning of my sun gold heirloom tomato plant, just so that everyone knows um, your plant does not have to be extremely bushy and less fruit. So you want more fruit and you just want the leaves that are gonna actually take a lot of energy from the sun. So you don't want so much branching so the suckers that you can easily remove on any plant, and you wanna do this when they're younger. So this one, I kind of let it go for some time. As you can see here, this is a sucker. You can go ahead and remove that. As long as there's no fruiting on it already, I don't see any fruits, it's all new growth. Remove that, and your plant will be more, more air can travel through, which allows for more um, flowers and fruit and just a healthier plant overall, not as bushy, so that the sun can actually penetrate the plant and ripen up those tomatoes. Here we have another one. So that's a sucker right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. You can see there's no fruit on it. It's young. You wanna get them when they're even smaller than that, but that works as well. So we've removed two, and there's another one here. It's a third one. And this one I would love to have removed earlier. I waited too long, but that's okay. We can keep it as a branch. Um, because I think, yeah, there's flowers starting right there. See that? So you wanna go ahead and leave that alone. It's gonna fruit, and this plant, this branch is gonna be taking in all the energy from the sun, um, as well as this one. It's just that this one will shade the lower one out just a little bit but that's okay. And it won't be lopsided. It will eventually um, have a tomato cage. So I believe this is the indeterminate variety. I'll check on that later and give a video on all my determinate versus indeterminate varieties. The ones that do need to be trellised, um, you wanna trellis them once they start leaning over um, and the wind starts getting more aggressive in May. And the Bay Area, we do get a lot of wind here in May. Here's another sucker, see that? Just don't want it pulling energy from the plant and energy from all these beautiful flowers. Look at all this flower. I'm gonna get a lot of sun gold tomatoes here and they're gonna be the heirloom variety, which is even more special. Look at this, just gorgeous. And see how that is a young one. I don't know if you can see that. So, looks like I may have pruned it before and it grew back, or I just never got to it. It's a little one. So there we go. So we've pruned in between each and every branch. And now, and also if you don't want, you definitely don't want any branches touching the soil, but I can go ahead and dig back the soil because this branch is looking um, less vibrant. We want more, as much leaf so it can get as strong as it can get. And I buried it deeper, six inches deeper, to allow for more root development along the stem. The deeper you bury your tomato, the more hardy and strong the trunk will be. Um, like this one, it's super deep. I'm gonna also prune that one. And thanks for watching. We have all the different varieties here. I can just go through them real quick. We have sun sugar cherry tomato here that needs to be pruned back as well. So what I do here, is this is the sun sugar cherry tomato. This is one of my ultimate favorite cherry tomatoes. They're so sweet. You can just eat them right off the vine. You don't really need to, um, or right off the bush, you don't really need to do much, but they're really good in a salad. Um, it looks like, where are the suckers? So this is a bushy variety. Oh, we already have a tomato in there. See that? And then we have a lot of little baby tomatoes there too as well. I don't know if you can see that very well. So here's some more flowers up top. And see what we can do for this plant. This one that seems more of a dwarf variety. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. Oh, okay, so this was the sucker here. 
um, except that it now has fruit. So we're gonna leave that and we're gonna leave this um, long broad leaf below it as well. If you see any leaves touching the ground, this leaf doesn't look very good at all. See how the yellowing and it was close to the soil, it might have touched. So because of that, we don't want any disease. We're gonna remove that one as well. And you can just pinch it off just like that. As long as you don't, um, you know, damage the trunk, this is perfect. And all of these are not touching the soil at all. So that's good. And this is not so much clay soil. It's 100% cocoa core. Um, there is some soil. There is a little bit of native soil mixed in, but like I only put about five, eight percent native soil. And then I also mixed in um, some organic raised bed mulch that had earthworm castings and alfalfa meal. Oh, see this one touching the ground. We don't want that one. Earthworm castings, alfalfa meal, and um, kelp. So, and that was a mixture. It did have some wood chips in there and it was a darker colored mixture compost. So that was also good for the raised bed. These are my cucumbers that almost died. So when I transplanted these two burpless cucumbers, I went ahead and I just shaded them with the umbrella because I planted them in a warm summer day. It was about 74 degrees out and they were wilting. They had already been planting. They were a bit late. They had their true leaf already on, which is this one. You can see how big it is. They've only been planted like a few weeks back and they're already this big. Um, they couldn't wait to get in this raised bed. But basically, these um, cucumbers, I saved their life this year because normally I just plant everything out and I don't think too much about it. I think they'll be fine if I water them in deeply. Not necessarily. If they are drooping and they look a little sad, you want to shade them with an umbrella. Just keep the heat off of them for at least one day. And that's all I did. For one day, I kept the heat off of them and they perked right up. They were extremely happy and I put a sheet over the umbrella as well. So they still felt the penetration. There was still a lot of heat hitting them, um, warming them inside like a little greenhouse, but not see-through. There's no sun penetrating to their leaf for that entire day that they were planted. And I planted them um, early May, May 1st, May 2nd, and I went ahead and shaded them for that one day and I think a little bit of the second day. And now look at them. They're doing wonderfully well. And I've been watering these this whole bed about every third day, every third or fourth day when I can remember to get the time to water them. Um, what else is going on here? I just have a lot of beautiful um, chili peppers. This is the Thai chili pepper. And great plants. I'll do a more updated review in just a minute. Thanks for watching everyone and happy gardening.